I was willing to completely die to any form of me that I had been so that I can birth the woman that I was becoming. The reason why a lot of people won't become who they want is because they're too attached to who they've been. And you hear it all the time when people say, I've always been this way. Okay, well, if that's working for you, keep doing that. I knew it wasn't working for me any longer. I had hit my version of rock bottom. So I was willing to let go of everything and everybody. See, another reason why people won't get there is because the doorway is for you to fit through. You're trying to carry everybody else through because you're trying to be rescue 911. And you got to rescue you first. I am much more valuable to my family and to my community because I was willing to let them go. Go through the door myself, teach myself, learn myself, condition myself, and then come back and get them. Because I, I was willing to inconvenience my entire life. My entire life. I was willing to disrupt my entire life to buy my future, to buy my possibility, to give my dream a chance. See, we're not supposed to tuck our dreams in on the, on the pillow when we get up in the morning. We're not supposed to leave them at home and go and fulfill somebody else's dream. We're not supposed to do that. That's not what we're wired to do. That's not who we are. Your human spirit doesn't care about the economy. The human spirit doesn't care that my son's father went to prison. My, the human spirit doesn't care what's happened to your family. The human spirit doesn't care about the past. You may have been molested or your family may have been broke or, or you may have been betrayed or you may have a divorce. Your human spirit doesn't care about any of that. Your human spirit simply says, what's our command for tomorrow. What do you want to create? It's not keeping score. Your brain is keeping score because your brain is designed to keep you safe. Your soul, your intuition, your human spirit is designed to make you soar. When you get to the edge, your brain will always tell you to step back. It's always going to tell you to step back because you can fall. Always. It's going to tell you to step back because before you fail, the last time you did this, you saw someone else fail. You could hurt. You could be off work. It's going to tell you it's designed to keep you safe. So you have to be willing to play between your brain and your soul. And on some days, you got to just listen to your soul. And you got to say, I'm going to leap. I'm going to get to the edge. Most people are at the edge. And you're standing at the edge. And you're watching everyone else fly. That's pit my ride, watch my crib, all this stuff. You know, watching people's lives on Facebook. You're at the edge watching someone else live, wondering what it's going to be like when you jump without ever jumping. And I'm just here to tell you, jump. Because only three things can happen. You're either going to jump and fly. Or you're going to jump and fall on something soft. Or you're going to fall down hard. Either way, you're going to get back up. You already know you got what it takes to get back up. You're not, your greatest fear is not that you will fall. Your greatest fear is that you will live a full life and never fly. That you never leaped. You're not afraid of dying. You're afraid of dying before the world sees who you really are. Before they really get your fingerprint. Before they really feel your breath. Before they really get your contribution. Before they really feel you. That's what you don't want to happen. You don't want to leave this place without us knowing you were here. All I'm doing is giving my, my dream a chance. And I'm not extraordinary. You don't get off the hook. You don't get to be let off the hook. I'm an ordinary woman who chooses every day to make one more extraordinary decision. And I just tell you guys, I'm that same girl who ran track for Dorsey High School, who struggled to get through high school, who got kicked out of college because I couldn't afford to stay. That was on government's. I'm that same girl. I'm that same girl. I don't forget her. I'm also that same woman who runs a multi-million dollar business. I'm also the same woman who has seven bestsellers. I own both of those. I own all of it. I don't shrink to my greatness and I don't live in my saga and my sorrow. If you can own your brilliance while owning your, your imperfections, if you can own your giant while owning your smallness, if you can live in duality, constant duality, the freedom will be earth shaking if you can live in that see either you don't want to be as great as you really are and you're trying to dim your light so that others won't feel insecure about themselves in your presence 
And so you keep playing at 79 watts when you know you're supposed to shine at 159 watts. And you keep checking the temperature of the room to see what the room can handle versus just giving the room you and letting them, if, the, if your light's too bright, then let them put on some shades. Can you give yourself permission to live in the duality of your imperfections and your smallness and what you're learning and what you still have to learn and your greatness and your brilliance and your light? Can you allow them to coexist and then serve them up to the world? To love you, to see you, to inhale you, to judge you, to leave you, to love you. You're just, some of us are just as afraid of being loved as we are to be left. Can you give the world permission to leave you and love you? If you can master you and your contribution to the planet, your unique fingerprint, your individual breath, your DNA, you're an unrepeatable miracle. You are an unrepeatable miracle. Give me some of you. Give me your uniqueness. I'm just here to disrupt everybody's norm and give them my uniqueness and hopefully inspire millions to do the same.